Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting uh, tutorial. Uh, we've got a great one today. I mean, of course we do. Uh, we always do. Why wouldn't we? It's a trick question. Uh, the truth is, this tutorial is probably the best tutorial I'm going to make all day and, uh, and I mean that. So what we're going to be creating is uh, this smoky fog substance and uh, this design also. So let's take a look. All right, very smoky, and we're also going to create uh, this little sequence here. And obviously, we don't need the text that was just, uh, you know, just some sort of promotion. The uh, the marketing guys throw that in there. I don't really have any control over that. Uh, but yeah, so we have this fog uh, just kind of flying up. Now, what if I told you that everything you see here was created with one single smoke element? Well, if I did, I'd be lying because this design actually has a texture in the background. But despite that texture, everything here was created using this one smoke element. So what I've done is taken this smoke image and added a little bit of noise, incorporated it into a particle system, and then also just dispersed it in 3D space with a slight rotation just to give it a little bit of depth. You'll notice if you ever look at Paramount or even DreamWorks, their opening sequence contains images of clouds that are slightly rotating, you know, or they slightly have noise on them so that they appear like they're, you know, animated video. But in most of the instances, it's actually pieces of still frames. Okay, so let's go and get started. What I'm going to do is take our smoke element, drop it into a new comp. Now, the smoke element is, uh, you know, pretty small. It's, uh, 300 by 300 pixels or so and what we need to do is mat it out so that we have transparency behind it so I'm going to create a new solid we'll make it a white solid and we'll put it beneath the smoke element and we'll set the track mat to luma inverted mat and so now we have transparency behind it and white for the cloud image now we can also colorize this element using an adjustment layer so new adjustment layer and effect color correction colorama now I really like this effect because it gives you a lot of control over the output image so what I'm gonna do is change the input phase to alpha close that and the output cycle to ramp uh, gray and then we can just change the two colors here so we'll change the back color to maybe a little bit of blue and bring the transparency down, the alpha. Now the other thing we want to do is add just a little bit of random movement to our cloud layer, because remember it is a still frame. So we'll choose Effect, Distort, Turbulent, Displace. Uh, here, I'll pull it up here. Turbulent, Displace. Drop that onto the adjustment layer. And we'll set the size to about 10. And We want to animate the evolution so that it kind of phases like that. So the quickest way is to alt click on the stopwatch. And then we're going to type in this expression box, we're going to type time times 100. And so what that's going to do is take the current time and multiply it times 100. So when we're at one second, we're going to have 100 degrees of evolution. Okay, so now we've created the smoke element. Let's create a new composition. So I'm going to choose new comp. And uh, we'll use the D1 setting here, 10 seconds, and I'll choose OK. And then I'll take our smoke element comp that we just created and bring it out. And then we'll create a new background. Let's do uh, black. Put it at the bottom. And now we have our smoke element. Now, the other thing we want to do is add a little bit of rotation. So I'll hit R, bring up the rotation, and again we're going to add a small expression. So I'm going to Alt click on the stopwatch, and we're going to type value. So that takes the current value. That means whatever our expression is, it'll add whatever the value is as well. And that way you can offset it later. So we'll do value plus time times 5. So we want it just to rotate just a little bit. So now we've created this uh, one smoke element, and we also want to make it 3D. So I'll hit F4, turn on the 3D layer switch, and then we want to start 
moving it around in 3D space. So before we go on, let's create a new camera. Go uh, 35 millimeter, choose OK. And then let's also take an element from Riot Gear, this texture, and put it into the background. Turn on the 3D switch for it. And just above that black background, actually. And we'll move it back in Z space. So if you roll over the blue Z axis, you can just push it back just like that. So now if I move our 3D camera around with the orbit tool, you can see we have some depth. So that's uh, going to help sell this effect. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the element. Choose Edit, Duplicate, and we'll move it. And then we'll hit W, bring up the rotation tool, and we're going to rotate it just a bit, maybe scale it up, you know, just to add a little bit of difference between these two elements, even though they are the same. Of course, you could have multiple elements to, you know, really make it unique, but, you know, this works pretty well. So, again, we'll duplicate it, move it around, rotate it, you know, I'm pushing it in Z space, and that way our camera is going to see some parallaxing of these elements. And I can also move an element really far into the background and then scale it up and you'll see you know it just uh, it looks pretty cool and then also you just want to rotate it so that it does look unique okay so let's go and play with the color on some of these elements I'm going to take our texture and invert it channel invert and then we'll choose effect color correction curves and we'll just darken it a bit and then we'll bring the red channel down and the blue channel up a bit so that we have a little color there and let's animate our camera so I'm going to create a null object make it 3D parent our camera to our null and then hit P bring up the position of the null and we'll just uh, let's see we'll just move it move it over a little set a keyframe Go forward a few seconds and then just uh, animate this. So now we have our animation. So now we can see where we want to add more clouds and you know how we want to compose our shot. So I'll just uh, make a few more of these elements, make some big ones here to kind of blend in a little bit. Now I want some of the elements to be closer to the camera and that way they fly by a little bit faster. So I'm going to move this one forward and so now you can see it kind of gets out of the way a lot quicker and even more so I'm just scaling them up and moving them around and let's see so we'll just make a few more we can put some on this side duplicate offset it in Z space and rotate it And then, of course, we can uh, just add a title and make it 3D. Make it uh, white, maybe. So, pretty simple uh, way to do this. Let's shut the null off. And then finally, we can just add uh, an adjustment layer with uh, another round of color correction to just uh, give it all sort of a, a look. And then we can animate the camera even. So we animate the null, but we can also animate the position of the camera. So let's see how that looks. Let's hit F9 on that, and then uh, we'll animate the position and the anchor point or the point of interest and then take the Z tool and then we'll just push in a little bit here and then we'll select the keyframes hit F9 and so now it'll move over and then slowly push into our title and then uh, you know we can take a look at that okay so I uh, just kind of sped up the keyframes here I selected them all and I held down alt kind of stretched them in so that the animation wasn't as slow but you can see you can really get away with having a still frame as long as you have sort of the secondary animation um, 
just a, a really cool way to do it. So that's one example. And of course, you can go into the smoke element comp, change the color here, and it will update in the final comp as well. So now let's take a look at this example with sort of the gas looking smoke. I mean, if we go to full resolution, you can see that there is a lot of detail here. Let's go ahead and create a new comp. And then we'll take that same smoke element uh, comp and bring it out. Now, what we want to do here, uh, for the sake of rendering, we're actually going to shut off the animation that we just created. So we're going to go in here, select the adjustment layer, turn off the turbulent displace. So we're going to shut that off. And that way, it's not going to take as long to render. Now, I am using Particular to distribute these layers, but you could also do it yourself by duplicating them and offsetting them in 3D space. So it's uh, you can do it, but you know, it will take you probably uh, you know, like a thousand hours. But so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new solid and choose OK. And we'll choose effect trap code particular. And then we'll shut off our smoke element. And then we'll click on this, we'll call this particular. And what we want to do is set these particles up. So now whenever you're using an image for a particle, you want to use fewer particles per second. And that way you won't uh, you know, blow your computer up um, trying to render it. I'm going to change this to box and turn the speed and velocity down and then increase the size of this box area. Also we'll create uh, that camera too. So right here we're just having a bunch of particles being born. Now we want the particles to last for longer than uh, three seconds. So we'll set that to 10 seconds because that's how long our comp is. And we also want the particles to stop emitting maybe about halfway through. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the particles per second, move forward one frame and set it to zero. And that way at this point we won't have any more particles being born. Now, if we go down here, we can set up our custom particle. So I'm going to change it from a sphere to a custom. And then I'm going to change the custom layer to the smoke element. So now you can see tiny little smoke elements that we've uh, created. And we're going to increase the size a bit. And so now we have a bunch of uh, these smoke elements. Let's see. A few things we want to play with. We want to randomize the size, some large, some small, and we'll set the transfer mode to screen. Maybe lower the opacity. Just just let's see, just a little bit. Right now it looks a bit hokey because all of the elements are all rotated the same way, and that just wouldn't be happening. So what we want to do is go to the rotation right here. And what this is is the rotation of the particle when it's first born. So we're going to alt click on that. We're going to type random 0 comma 360. And what that's going to do is create a random number from 0 to 360. And that way we'll create, you know, some random looking particles and uh, that looks obviously a lot better. Now we also want to add a little bit of rotation speed. So 0 0.01 and that way they rotate ever so slightly. Now at this point, let's go ahead and tweak it to uh, make it look like that original comp. So we obviously need more particles because we're going to be making this pretty large. So we'll set this to about 25. Now that's a lot of particles for this one spot, but we want to kind of make the size of this particle area larger. Now, let's see. you can kind of see, you know, there are a few possibilities here. You know, you can create a kind of a cool cloud fly through. If you lower the opacity here, you could basically, you know, fly through some clouds or some smoke or some dust, um, you know, right away. You know, that's kind of a cool way to do it. Uh, what I did is I just kind of rotated the camera so that it was sort of inside of all of this, but it was somewhat looking down on it. And then I increased uh, the size, you know, just a bit. Also bring the opacity back up here. 
So then to animate, I created a null object, made it 3D, and then parent the camera to the null object, and then animate the position of the null object, keyframe the position, move forward, and then just, uh, you know, move this, you know, up. And you can, of course, uh, make the particles uh, larger to fill the space in a little bit better. Um, however, now we want to color the particles a little differently. So we'll go into the smoke element, comp, alt, double click. And in our colorama settings, we'll set this to, you know, more of a darker blue. And set the inside color to maybe a light blue. So we'll close that, come back here. And finally, we'll just uh, create an adjustment layer with a curves adjustment. And uh, just want to add in some nice blue color. And then I'm going to create another adjustment layer. So new adjustment layer. And this time we're going to choose color correction, hue and saturation, and desaturate the image. And then add another color curves adjustment. And this time we're going to go for like a purple color. So we'll add some red. Let's see. So something like that. And then we'll take a mask and mask out half of it. And then feather it out. And so now the particles, you know, actually, let me reverse these keyframes. So now uh, we have that kind of an effect. Now, another thing I did earlier was I duplicated my particular layer. And then I changed it from custom to a sphere and made it really, really small, like a one. And then I made, made it a little larger and then turned on the motion blur increase the opacity see that and so now we have sort of some random particles flying through the air with our smoke and then physics add a little bit of turbulent to the position so we're just gonna increase that and so those particles are kinda moving around a little bit more randomly than the initial particles so that's uh you know what you can do to create that effect uh you know add some titles and you know whatever now coming back to this comp uh one other thing that you can do is change the transfer mode to screen and the layers will blend together a little bit nicer and give you a little bit more depth uh you know so that's one thing i forgot to mention so definitely do that Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do with this technique um, and play around with different image maps. So instead of using this smoke, try a cloud element. Um, try a different looking smoke element. Um, experiment, create some different uh, you know, particle effects. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Now I just want to point out that the name of the tutorial is Smoke Screen. And it's true, that's what we're creating is this kind of cool smoke screen. But we're not really creating smoke, we're using a single particle element to create smoke so we're kind of faking it it's kind of a trick now another definition for a smoke screen is sort of deception or a trick or something like that so it kinda of works both ways it's sorta of like a play on words see we're creating smoke screen but it's also sort of a smoke screen so obviously we have these great writers coming up with these mind-bending concepts uh... It's just it's amazing now, of course, if you need some help following along with some of the more advanced tutorials, be sure to check out the After Effects basic training. Uh, you know, I do go at a more reasonable pace, and uh, I tell you about all the keyboard shortcuts and all that good stuff. So um, I hope it's not a problem that I just kind of go through these quickly. Um, you know, I understand that some people, uh, you know, just want to be able to understand it as they watch it. And uh, if you do have any problems, um, go ahead and send me an email with your home address, and I'll come to your house and break your windows. So that's how we work that out. Um, anyway, my name is, I'm, I'm kidding. Kidding, I'm not going to break your windows. Uh, I don't have time for all the windows I'd have to break. Anyway, I'm Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net. And come support our site. Check out our DVDs and our great products. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time with another great video tutorial.
Wait, there's one more joke here somewhere. So I made these clouds. I was going to demonstrate this, but it's obviously pretty clear. And then I added this title. Take the day off. Look at the sun with a telescope. Do not do that, or you will go blind.